Hi, my name is Thomas, and you're watching Casual DIY Channel. In today's video, we'll be covering some basics about routers. Check out the video. With a router, to name a few, you can do roundovers, chamfers, dados, uh, rabbits, uh, you name it, you can do a lot of things thanks to these um, relatively simple tools. Currently on the market, you'll find two most common types of routers. First one is a fixed base, like this one. Sometimes they are referred as trim routers. Um, they are less powerful, although these will tackle about 80% of the jobs you will have for a router. They're very flexible and uh, they still pack enough power to tackle most jobs. The second type is a plunge router. Okay, Usually they're a lot bigger, a lot heavier and do pack a lot more power in them. Uh, they will be more suitable for um, harder tasks, uh, larger cuts, anything like that. And what they do, they have this ability to lower themselves down and go up. So basically making a plunge cut, release the lever, lock it in place and you continue with your cut but we'll go into details on both of these in just a few moments okay so a quick anatomy lesson with a router for example i'm going to be showing this trim router here and um, it's cordless so i've got the battery on top then the spindle itself the motor is just over here you've got the on off switch just over here so this one actually has got a safety um, button here and then the on switch like so if you want to uh, put a cutter or change your cutter in your router, make sure in this case you take the battery out as you do not want that machine to start on you. Similar approach if you've got a corded version, make sure it's unplugged uh, from the mains. Okay, so with this fixed base, I can uh, take the base out totally like so. And now you can see that's the cutter of the router located here. Just above is the collet with the uh, locking nut over here. It makes sure that the uh, router cutter will stay in place very, very steadily. In most cases nowadays, you also have got a special uh, stop feature that prevents uh, the spindle from spinning. So you can use a key to undo this nut and then you can freely remove uh, the router bit. Now the collet itself, it comes in two sizes in most cases, a quarter of an inch. And what that means, you'll be able to take router bits where the shank is quarter of an inch. So that's the size, that's the uh, thickness of the shank itself. But also some routers will be able to take half an inch uh, router bits, like for example, this one. You see the shank over here is a lot thicker, that's half an inch. Um, and what is the main difference and reason uh, behind this? Well, the larger bits, as you can see, the size of this bit is a lot bigger and it just gives much a higher grip capacity and it's just safer to use the bigger bits that require more horsepower to do its job. So the bigger the shaft, half an inch, it's usually suited for the larger routers like for example this one, the um, plunge routers, whereas the smaller routers like this one, the uh, trim router, will only be able to take the quarter of an inch due to basically the size and the power of this tool. However, as I just mentioned, usually uh, the bigger plunge routers, they are able to take a quarter of an inch and half an inch. And that is done by the collet just over here. And that is basically the example I've got for you. So uh, you can exchange the collars. This one is quarter of an inch. That's a half an inch. I'm just going to quickly show you that. So that's how it fits into this one and then the half an inch. So basically, for example, here, I can undo this locking nut like so, okay? And I can change it for a larger one. So this one is set up for a quarter of an inch, 
but I can change it for a half an inch if I need to. So that's the absolute basic about it. It's a tool that helps you spin a cutter at frightening speeds. You can uh, trim edges of uh, pieces of work. You can do some dados. You can do so, so many things with these types of tools. So let me just show you how easy it is to actually change the uh, cutter in your router. More or less, uh, the plunge routers, the trim routers, they will have a similar way of changing the bits. So I'm just going to show you on this example, taking the base off. As you can see, this is the locking mechanism, so that spindle will stop spinning. So I can use my uh, key to actually unlock it. So I'm meeting that. Now I've pressed that button here, locked it in place. So now that gives me the ability to use my key to undo the nut. Uh, that's the collet itself that's holding uh, the cutter. And now I can take it out. Similar way install the bit always leave a um, probably about depending on your router bit I would suggest about um, between five to ten millimeters of the shank sticking out like so and then secure it like that make sure you always uh, use a key like that put a lot of pressure make sure it's locked in place really well as you definitely don't want to have a situation where the router bit just falls out as the machine is operating as that could be extremely dangerous. With my plunge router is exactly the same scenario although you're not taking the base as you can see uh, that's the locking button here that locks uh, the spindle from spinning and then I'm just got the ability to use my uh, key to unlock that nut and you've got access to your cutter. Most of the routers nowadays will have the ability to change the speed of how quick the tool is operating, so the RPMs. For example, I've got six speeds on this particular router, um, and it starts from 10,000 RPMs, and it goes right up to 30,000 RPMs. Now, to show you how versatile these tools can be, I'm just gonna show you this little case where I've got my router bits, and that's just naming a few. Look at that, you've got so many possibilities, different sizes, a chamfer bit, a straight bit, okay, groove bit, a round bit, uh, there's so many other options here. You can do uh, some uh, curves. The amount of different types of router bits is, it goes into hundreds. Now in today's video, I'm just showing you them and we're not gonna go into details about the router bits. They deserve to have their own video and uh, that will come in the near future. I just want to mention two different types of router bits, okay? So one, will be a bearing guided like this one. So what the bearing does, it actually guides the router on the surface of the edge of your board like so, and then you can make the cut. For example, this is a randover bit, so you can rand over this edge and the bearing is guiding the router on the edge of your workpiece. And the second type is, for example, this straight bit, it doesn't have a a bearing to guide it so you can make a cut in the middle of the board and if you've got your router just like so you can do it in two ways first of all you can just do it freehand like that or have um, or some sort of an edge that this base of the router will ride against making sure you're making a straight cut now I'm just going to show you an example how to operate a router of uh, this type. So how do you set the depth of cut on your router? In this particular case, as I mentioned, uh, you've got the star knob. Usually there's something on the front of the machine and you just lower the base until you see the router cutter at the depth that you want. For example, like so, lock it in place. However, if you are after a specific depth of cut, then you can use a device like this one, um, depth gauge, for example, and then you can set it up uh, to that quite easily and you know exactly where your cutter is, how deep it will go into your workpiece. 
Now, however, sometimes the best way to establish how deep the router bit needs to actually go is to put it against your workpiece uh, that you're trying to um, use your router bit on and by doing that establish how deep it needs to go and then just lock it in place. Okay, to establish on which way you should be pushing or pulling your router, you need to understand how the router actually works. Uh, the router bit will be turning clockwise, okay? So naturally, the router bit will be trying to pull you on the material like that. But if you go from right to left, you'll have far less control over the router as it will just pull you uh, on the edge. And that's called a climb cut. In some cases that is recommended. Uh, however, in general usage of a router, uh, that's actually more suitable for more experienced people that do know how to properly operate this machine and do have a lot of experience. So for a beginner and most of the usage applications of a router, you want to be pushing against the rotation of your router bit and that's known as the push cut. So you go in from left to right. And that's very important to remember that as that is the uh, proper and safe way in operating your router. Now remember, before making any cuts with your router, wear some eye protection and some hearing protection. Some of the routers can be very loud and obviously chips flying everywhere can damage your eyes. Make sure you are safe before you operate the machine. So I'm gonna be adding a small Randover on this edge of this uh, MDF board. And as I mentioned before, we are making a push cut. That's the safest way to operate this machine, going from left to right against the clockwise movement of your router. Now, how do you actually start the tool itself? Make sure the base is located on the top of the material. However, the uh, router bit is away from your board so it doesn't catch your board. When uh, the router gets to full RPM, then you're starting to make the cut itself. And now, as you can see, we've got really nice, lovely, rounded uh, edge. Obviously, make sure that if you're routing anything, it's secured, it's clamped correctly, so the piece will not move on you. However, if you want to use a plunge router or a plunge base for your trim router, so what you need to establish is how deep uh, the uh, plunge needs to go. So press it against the workpiece like so, or use the depth indicator I've showed you before, like that, you can lock it in place with a lever at the back of the uh, plunge base, so that will remain at this particular depth, and now you can set up the depth uh, stop at the front of the machine, lock it in place, and now when you release the plunge, so it will go right uh, to the top again, now with the depth stop set up, you can just plunge the machine and it will always be at the correct depth that you've set up and you can make the cut itself. Now I'm gonna show you a bit of freehand routing with a plunge base and the fixed base and I'll show you the difference how you actually operate them. So uh, with a plunge base, you make the plunge to the correct depth, make sure you've got the depth stop uh, set up and just make the cut. One very important thing that we need to note here is the fact that, for example, if you want to make a cut that's one centimeter deep, you do not set up your router to one centimeter of depth straight away. You need to do several shallow passes. So, for example, set it up to three millimeters and then repeat the process until you get the depth of cut that you require. That is the best and safest way to do it. 
Now I'm going to change to the uh, fixed base and as you can see the router bit is sticking outside of the base over here so I cannot just drop it like that. So what you do, you lean uh, the base like so on that slight angle and just make the plunge like that. And that's the difference between operating two different bases. With the plunge base, you start on the piece of wood and you just make the plunge. However, with the fixed base, you need to have the route on a slight angle and just make the plunge like that. So, um, in that respect, it's far better to have a plunge base if you're making cuts in, this, in the middle of a board. However, with the fixed base, if you're doing a randover or a chamfer at the edge, of the board that's definitely more suitable there and that's some of the absolute basics you need to know before using a router we only just scratch the surface of how useful a router can actually be today that is all i want to share with you however in the future there will be a few more videos talking about routers uh, talking about router cutters how you can use them different techniques and i'm going to show you some of the projects you can actually tackle with them so if you don't want to miss those bit more advanced videos stay tuned to my channel subscribe to my channel press that bell notification icon and change it to all so you won't miss any of those videos in the future and if you enjoyed today's video drop me that like button down below as well but for now guys that's all thank you so much for watching thank you for your time take care